First, the camera. I use a Panasonic GH5. This is a mirrorless camera, which means that it is smaller, lighter, and more discreet. More importantly, the viewfinder continues to function when shooting video. This means that the camera can be held close to the eye and therefore steady. Unlike when using the screen, the image can be seen in sunlight. The GH5 has a five axis stabilizer within the camera body and the lens is also stabilized. This works incredibly well and perfectly suits the run and gun type of photography I favor. All my shooting, other than time lapse, is now handheld. Wind noise is always a problem, but I have found it can be greatly reduced by using these mini dead cats over the microphone holes. The lens I use most often is 14 to 140 millimeters, which on this camera is equivalent to 35 millimeters, 28 to 280, which I find covers most situations. I can hand hold and still get acceptable steady images up to 140 millimeters, provided I can brace myself against something. Any residual shake can be removed in the editing system. In order to include motion blur, shooting video requires shooting at a low shutter speed. For 30 frames a second, this would be at 1 60th of a second exposure time. This means using a neutral density filter, which in effect puts sunglasses on the camera lens. I use a variable ND filter. Instead of a lens cap, I use a hood hat, which fits over the standard lens hood and doesn't rattle or become misplaced like a regular lens cap. I always shoot in 4K, which is four times the resolution of high definition. This not only results in sharper images with deeper color, but most importantly, using the surplus resolution, it is possible to keep the camera reasonably static during shooting and introduce camera movements such as panning and move-ins during the editing process using the Ken Burns effect of which more later. So to summarize this is all I have to carry in the way of camera gear. And now to editing. I use Final Cut Pro 10 on an Apple iMac. This is a screenshot of a typical completed project with a runtime of about 17 minutes. At the top left is the browser window, which contains the imported raw clips. To its right is the viewer window, which displays any clip played from either the browser or the timeline. To the right of that is the inspector, where adjustments are made. The lower part of the screen is the timeline, where editing takes place and the project is built. The words video track show the video clips on the storyline and everything below are the audio tracks. As you can see, the audio is much more complex than the video and usually takes more time to create. I use three screens with the raw clips in the browser window on one screen, the editing program on the iMac and the main player window on a flat panel TV to the right. Once a clip or portion of a clip is used in the timeline, it is marked by an orange line. Final Cut 10 features a magnetic timeline, making it easy to adjust the length of clips in the storyline without all the clips going out of sync. Associated clips, both video and audio, are hooked to the main storyline clips so that everything stays in sync. No clip will ever inadvertently overrun another. When a conflict occurs, one clip will move automatically to another track. Here you can just see the lines which link adjacent clips to their associated clips in the storyline. Nothing ever has to be saved. Every action is saved automatically. The Ken Burns effect is named after a film documentarian 
who introduced it to bring life to archive photographs. I use it a lot for both stills and video. This is a video clip. The indistinct mark near the horizon is a polar bear. The zoom is done in the editing system. The next two shots are both stills. This is a video clip to which a Ken Burns zoom has been applied. It is not detectable. This is a video clip exactly as shot. This is a screenshot of how the Ken Burns effect is created. The red rectangle delineates how you want the image to finish, and the green rectangle how you want it to start. If you want the effect to start or end slowly, or both, or run at a constant rate, the adjustment can be set here. Activate by pressing Done, and here is the result. Here is another handheld clip, as shot. As you can see, it is very steady, and there is no camera movement. This is the exact same clip with camera movement introduced by using the Ken Burns effect and taking advantage of the surplus definition obtained by shooting in 4K. The effect can be reversed simply by clicking this button. This clip was shot from a rather bouncy tender. Starting now, it has been stabilized in Final Cut. And now to the all-important audio. First, narration. Narration forms an important part of my videos. My method is to take the video editing up to about 95%. Then I play through the video, writing into a laptop, the sequence of events, together with any neat phrases that have come to me while editing. I then take these notes and use them to write the first draft of the actual narration. I print this out and read it aloud while playing through the project. It is important to speak it aloud to make sure that you have not created any tongue twisters. Inevitably, I find that I have written too much, so I either have to cut it down, or, if the words are important, add back in video clips previously cut out, or even slow down existing clips to make them run longer. If I make a mistake, I just keep repeating the phrase without stopping the recording until I have got it right. I then zoom in on the audio track in the browser so that I can see the gaps between the phrases. The I key marks the in point and the O key the out point. Doing this, I insert the phrases in the right place in the timeline. At this point, they do not have to be perfectly accurate, as I can adjust them later. This is what each audio phrase looks and sounds like in the timeline. If you want the effect to start or end slowly, or both, or run at a constant rate, the adjustment can be set here. Activate by pressing Done, and here is the result. I will then have to go through the entire narration, adjusting for volume, etc. But first, I need to find music and sound effects. All music needs to be copyright cleared. 
I use two sites, shockwavesound.com shockwavesound.com and Pond 5. Both of them allow MP4 versions of the music to be downloaded free with the watermark included, which allows you to try it out in your project before you buy. Pond 5. Once the music and sound effects have been selected and in place, the audio levels on each track need to be adjusted and balanced. Also, each and every video clip has to be checked and adjusted for color and continuity with adjacent clips. Titles need to be created. Where appropriate, maps drawn with place names and routes superimposed. When all is complete, I make a QuickTime master file using the share feature on Final Cut Pro. Using a conversion program, this master file is then converted to the appropriate format for each end use and uploaded to YouTube and Vimeo and burned to standard DVD and Blu-ray discs. To create standard DVD I use a program called My DVD that is MI DVD. To create Blu-ray I use a program called Roxio Toast. I create and print the labels and duplicate the disks. For me, the ratio of total process time from having the raw clips loaded into the computer to project completion is usually about 100 to 1. That is to say that one minute of runtime takes 100 minutes of process time. So there you have it, a quick overview of my way of making videos.